If you have any questions, please put them in the group chat. Make sure that you are asking those questions to everyone so that we can all see and continue the conversation on that over there. And uh, without further ado, here we go. So our conversation today is in regards to how to mitigate financial risk during a crisis. Some of the things that I'm going to be talking about today are practices that I, uh, I put into my business during usual uh, business and as well practices that I am helping my business uh, businesses that I work with. So don't need to introduce myself, uh, uh, Kayla has already done that, but I just want to let you know that I started in financial services in 1999, right at the tech burst, and then again came back from a mat leave in 2008, right at the minute, minute of the financial crisis. And during that time, um, my husband and I owned a small business together, and we have weathered, um, we've weathered a crisis in, in our business as well. And here's some of the techniques that we have deployed at those times and what I'm doing currently in my business as well. So right now what we're seeing is how do we conduct business as usual in unusual circumstances? And the first thing that I am saying to all of my business owners and as well in my own practice is the number one thing that we need to do to mitigate uh, financial risk in our business is take time to pause. Um, we understand that this crisis came down on us pretty quickly and that in order for us to uh, weather it, we really need to take a look um, and consider what our choices are. Just going to stop the share for a minute because I've seen some chats happening. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't that you couldn't hear me. Thanks, Kayla. As Kayla said, this is all uh, new territory for a lot of us. So consider your choices. When we are acting, when we're acting from a place of fear, false evidence can appear real. And what we're seeing right now is like the stages of, of grief. And uh, this, this is, these are uncharted territories that we're in. And sometimes what appears to us, we are taking a look and, uh, and it's not quite looking at the facts when we're making these decisions. So that's why it's really important to pause and understand that cash right now is the oxygen in your business. It's also the oxygen in your personal life. This is not a uh, webinar or a discussion on personal finance, but it's the same in our businesses and in our personal life. So we need to do everything that we can to not smother it. What I really want you to take a look at in your businesses is understand your financial runway. And what I mean by this is taking time to pause and really calculate what do we currently have in reserves in our business that will take us, how long will that take us and how long um, can we last? And so taking a look at that first and calculating your financial runway is really important. So how do we do this? The first thing that you want to do is reduce those cash outflows in your business. So you want to take a look at canceling anything that currently is not an expense that you can be incurring in your business. And this is the same in your business and in your personal life. So what I like to do in my own business as well as when I'm working with business owners is do a full expense audit. And I do this in times of business as usual, as well as doing business in unusual times. So what I like to do is I like to follow the P, R, and U method when conducting an expense audit on my business. So the first thing that I wanna take a look at is my P expenses or my profit expenses. So what are those expenses that I'm incurring to get money in the door. Those are not the businesses that you want to now restrict uh, the, the flow of oxygen or the flow of money to. What you wanna take a look at are those R expenses and U expenses. 
So our expenses are those reoccurring expenses that happen in our businesses. Things like the insurance, um, your rent, uh, subscriptions that you may have. Take a look at those. And in times of usual, what I say is let's, let's look at those and negotiate those and see how, they can, um, how we can get better terms. Right now, what I'm saying is take a look at that with a fine tooth comb and really analyze, is this something that I really need at this time? And the U expenses are our unnecessary expenses. When I'm working with and advising business owners, I always say cut those um, right away. And now it is imperative that we do that. And one of the things that I do and have done actually is take a look at all of those um, expenses that are coming in on a regular basis and are maybe set up for direct uh, debit out of a debit card and out of a credit card. And I've actually had debit cards and credit cards reissued. So that is a great way to just stop all of those expenses coming out and it'll make you realize what are the ones that you need and what are the ones that you're gonna add back in and what are the ones that are absolutely you expenses. So when you reissue those cards, don't do all the cards at the same time. Um, and uh, did this a week ago and they, it came to me within the week uh, FedEx. And what that does is it really just shuts everything down immediately and allows you time again to pause and add those things back on that you, that you see that you're going to need. And again, doing that on your personal life as well, because I had this Apple iTunes that I couldn't even, I didn't even understand uh, what it was that I had purchased. I think it was a guitar tuner. And then trying to get rid of that was just so difficult. So shutting that down by having cards reissued. Then taking a look at renegotiating any terms that you may have um, that are, reoccurring, so those are expenses, or even one-time expenses, so things like your uh, rent right now, there is a program available called the Nova Scotia Commercial Debt Relief. I have been working with my clients in regards to this program and just going out and again, working with their landlords. Uh, maybe it's going to interest only payments. Maybe it's going that they are sharing in the CAM. So in that case, all of those uh, places, the, the cams of the rent, they have got it down to there. Or even I've worked with one client that at this time, their landlord is taking rent from their damage deposit. So again, taking a look and being creative. And I find if you come to your suppliers or if you come to those reoccurring events that you have with a plan um, and in a place where you pause and want to work with somebody, I'm finding that uh, that's where we're having our greatest success with the businesses that I'm working with. Also looking to seek new terms or extensions with your vendors and your suppliers. And again, coming with a solid plan is so important. On the other side, we're looking at when we're talking about what is that runway, that cash flow runway that we have in our business, we wanna look at ways that we can increase cash inflow into our business. So how can we proactively address what I like to call the borrower lender matrix to ensure that we have cash coming into our businesses. So what I'm talking about there is taking a look at your balance sheet and looking at your accounts receivable and making sure that the borrower is high on that matrix. So the matrix is that over time, the desire for the borrower to pay back the lender diminishes and the opposite for the lender. So over time, the lenders, uh, the lenders want for that obligation to be paid increases. So what you always want to do is keep the borrower on that high part of the matrix and make sure that you are top of mind. So how are some ways that you can do that? Well, first of all, introducing new payment options to the borrower. Maybe it's 0% financing right now. If you've always been uh, taking e-transfers, maybe it's offering them a credit card option right now. So introducing new payment options to keep them high on that borrower lender matrix. I've even done this when we've weathered crisis in the past in 2008, going to uh, looking at that accounts receivable and going and saying, what can you afford right now? Can you afford a dollar? Yes, you can afford a dollar. How about 10? How about 200? $200 a week is where we landed on. 
And not only does it ensure that I'm getting paid, but it also ensures that they are high on that borrower lender matrix. Some other places that you may want to look for increases in cash flow as well is the wage subsidy program that is available through the federal government as well as the work share program. So in that wage subsidy program, it's now gone up to 75%. And the work share program has now been extended from 38 weeks to 76 weeks. Again, stopping and pausing and taking time to build a strategy for your cash flow and understanding how you can use these uh, programs that are available to you to increase the inflow of cash in your business is so important at this time. And there's really neat things that we can do to use those programs um, and put those programs and work those programs together for your businesses. The fifth thing that you want to do, the fourth thing, sorry, that you want to do is debt control. So unfortunately, a lot of the programs that are coming down um, and available to you are, on, are going to, in some cases, increase debt in the business. And if we are we're taking on new debt to maintain business as usual, I just caution you in regards to that. But there are certainly strategies around the programs that are coming down that we can use. I want you just to take a look at, are I, am I using these programs or am I debt leveraging right now or am I debt bridging? And when we have a clear plan on uh, using debt and, and, and having uh, debt control in our businesses, what we do is we take a look at, okay, in debt leveraging right now, so I'm working with a company and um, they rent equipment. It's equipment rental company. So right now they have a great opportunity to purchase a piece of equipment that they can rent out right now. They're, it'll just be day, it'll it's just day by day that they're going to be able to rent this out. It's going to be a great business for them. So we're taking a look at some of these programs to use debt leveraging to get that equipment so that we can increase those cash inflows into the business. The same thing with debt bridging. So the government of Nova Scotia, the provincial government, as well as HRM has announced that it will be paying those contracts that you have with those organizations from their 30 day terms down to the five day terms. So if we are taking a look at using debt and debt programs that are available to us right now to float our business until those payments come in, that's a great use of debt and debt bridging. Again, this is a great time to renegotiate better terms for your business. As of last Friday, the Bank of Canada uh, dropped the key lending rate another 50 basis points. So that means in two weeks, over two weeks, the Bank of Canada has dropped that key lending by 1 .2, 125 basis points. So what we're looking at right now is unprecedented lending uh, terms and as well, uh, that Prime is going to be dropping. So if it hasn't already, as of two o'clock this morning, I still haven't seen anything come out. So if you know, please put that in the chat. But renegot renegotiating your debt for better terms um, is a good way of debt control at this moment. And you have those instru instruments available to you. Debt planning. Again, using programs that are available to you, like the Canada Emergency Business Account, so the Canada Emergency Business Account, this program was dropped on Friday as part of the Canada Business Emergency Business uh, Relief. And what that program or that account is allowing is up to $40,000 for qualified businesses and qualified businesses would be businesses that have a payroll of 50,000 to a million. And again, this is changing on the hour. And uh, right now, the Prime Minister is doing his daily address. So, uh, I'm, and we're on this call. Um, so, I'm not, you could be changing this right now. But as of, uh, again, two o'clock this morning, this is what this looked like. And a portion of this uh, loan program, in addition to it being interest free, a portion of it, up to 20, 25%, up to 10,000, will be forgivable if it's paid in full of December, at December 31st, 2020. So again, using this instrument or even the Nova Scotia commercial, uh, so the Nova Scotia um, Small Business Loan Guarantee, which of course is administered through the credit unions, um, they're, they're guaranteeing for the credit unions the first uh, up to $100,000 for businesses that wouldn't otherwise qualify. So these are good instruments that you may want to take a look at, both on the federal level and the provincial level, when we're looking at debt planning. 
If you have currently have debt, this is a great time to consolidate and refinance. And one of the things that I'm really working with with my business owners is making sure that during this crisis that they are keeping their high credit rating. Because again, it's not just about getting our businesses to navigate through this COVID crisis, but also to come out at the under, other side of this in a very strong position. That's why we have to be really, um, really looking at how, how we're going to plan and use these programs that are available to us to put us in this position of strength. Try to avoid using credit cards. It's the last place that you want to go in regards to your debt planning because those interest rates are so high. Um, I have been working with business owners at taking a look to see if they can get um, the debt that's on their credit card. If we can use these programs like the Canada Emergency Benefit, like the Nova Scotia Small Business Guarantee, um, and to put again into looking at consolidating and refinancing, refinancing. But again, the last place that we want to be going for debt planning is those credit cards. Get proactive. One of the things that I've done in my business as well, we're setting it up with the businesses that I work with, is setting up a new general ledger account in their books that we are calling COVID. And we're putting in that uh, account anything that we are incurring in our businesses as a result of this crisis. So for example, I'm working with a business right now that she has had to go out and buy uh, gloves, uh, she's had to go out and buy paper bags, she's had to go out and buy additional containers, um, she's in the wholesale uh, grocery business. So these are things that she wouldn't have incurred in her business before. So we are putting these in a place that if something should come down from the government that we have to prove a loss or show our expenses or even something that comes down and maybe they're going to reimburse those expenses, one-time expenses because of this virus, that that is going to be in a place that is available to you. So you don't have to go back and go through, re through receipts and everything else. And if you're a planning junkie like I am, I wanna comparatively see what the virus has done to my business. So I'm setting this, all this up in a separate place that I could do that planning work for 2021. And I'm also doing this in my personal life. So I've set up an Excel spreadsheet that I'm keeping track of the additional things that we have had to purchase for our, for our personal life um, so that because of the virus, so that I will see, okay, well, if I've had to buy Google Classroom for my daughter, or if I've had to buy Kahoot or some of these other educational programs that I'm buying, to see who knows, maybe down the road, these things will be reimbursed to us. But again, I just wanna keep that separate so that I have that information. Information is always so golden to having a plan and having a plan brings calm. If you have a business that has inventory, I cannot stress to you enough how important it's going to be to be evaluating your inventory and in particularly your inventory terms. So when I owned a retail business, one of the things that I used to always have in my, my team run for me, it was called April's Moldy Bread Report. And on that Moldy Bread Report, was any inventory of 90 days or more. And we would take a look at that, see if it was things that had a large shelf life, and if it was not, if it was seasonal, we would put that in and have a plan for turning that inventory over very quickly. So tightening your turns and moving products is going to be very important at this time, and also proactively in planning, understanding that your supply chain is going to be interrupted at this time. So understanding that what the impact of this is going to be on your next season. So right now, I would have been planning my spring season 2021, but understanding that there is going to be, again, interruptions in that supply chain and getting proactive and making sure that my orders were being in, revised, putting those revisions and making sure that those were top of mind, again, with my suppliers, getting proactive, not just navigating this crisis but coming out stronger keeping that oxygen pumping in your business one of the other things i've done as well is review my accounting system so my invoicing to make sure that it's more automated and again keeping my borrowers high on that borrower lender matrix i've also gone in and changed the verbiage so in my quickbooks and in my paypal i use paypal for my u.s clients making sure that I'm not just using the canned verbiage in these programs, 
making um, it, you know, making it more friendly, making it more gratitude based, and making sure that I'm staying in a place that again is top of mind uh, with my borrowers. Future planning. One of the things that uh, we are doing and the, our, our team is doing is doing a comparative analysis again on prior years business at this time and looking at cause and effect and understanding where our business is going. I've also taken a look with my, I've been doing this a lot with the business owners that I work one-on-one -on -one with, is reevaluating their product and service mix and also taking a look at their client history, determining again, we all have 20% of our clients making up 80% of our sales, understanding who those clients are and being very proactive on reaching out to them with a communication plan and as well, any other kind of concessions that those clients need at this time. Because again, these are going to be the clients that we are going to be working with after this is all over. And they are looking to us as leaders. So we wanna make sure that we are not uh, just again going into complete survival mode during this time, but how are we gonna get out of this on the other end with a strong business? Tax planning. This is what I, um, what I do with my clients and my business in usual times is I actually get them to set up a separate bank account for their taxes, preferably a separate bank account for their sales tax and another account for their both their income tax and their corporate income tax. And if you haven't done this already, I suggest that this would be a great time to do this and take the money that you had set aside for your taxes and move it into this account. And I'll tell you why. It's removing temptation from your business and making you get innovative, which is so important because those taxes, even though there are extensions now until June, um, those, are going to need, those are going to need to be paid in the future. So having them separate it right now is going to remove from temptation. It's like in my personal life. Uh, my husband is our designated grocery getter. And uh, I've been telling him, do not bring potato chips into this house. Because if you bring potato chips into this house, I'm going to eat all of the potato chips. So it's the same with the, the taxes. Remove those from your general bank account. Put them somewhere uh, that out of sight, out of mind. And what I'm doing is I'm treating those taxes as if they are due April 30th. So even though there is going to be an extension, I am making sure that I have that money that I'd already set aside that it's staying there. And also remember with a tax extension, it is also on if you are a, making your contributions on a monthly basis, that is going to be um, extended, but that's all going to pile up as well. So you don't wanna have this double whammy happen September 1st. And I read an article from the Globe and Mail last night from Tim Chisnick that I thought was just so great. And it was 27 ways that if you are in a financial position, of how you can give. And one of the things that he said was, if you are in a position to pay your taxes as of April 30, this please do so, that, so that the government has funding so that they're able to um, keep going with the programs that they have, which really resonated with me. And, uh, and I'll be really, really reconsidering that. It's same with my GST and my HST. I file on an, I'm an annual filer and was ready to uh, both file and pay on the 30th of April and treating that as if that is still happening. And um, I encourage you also to do so if you, enter, if you are in a position to do so. Maintenance, when we've taken a look now at determining our financial runway and we've put together our cash flow plan and as well our strategic plan, I'm actually gonna talk a little bit more about strategic planning here, I really encourage you to schedule a reg regular meeting, whether it's weekly or bi-weekly, the financial debrief, so the financial plan, the cash flow plan with a trusted advisor, um, I have here your dog, your cat, whomever, um, just so that you are again working the plan. Having a plan brings calmness and, and it also gives you ease and it also instills confidence. And if you have a team that you're leading, knowing that there's a plan will instill confidence for them. But what, as a leader, you need somebody else as well 
outside of it, someone who's not emotionally attached to help guide you and navigate you through these times in regards to your financial plan. Take a look at your product or service mix and what you are offering, especially what you are offering at this time. If you have, you know, if you've done this, this is something that I do with my clients is we take a look at all of our product and service offerings, understand the cost of goods sold for each of those products to determine the margins. Because what can happen is that you become so emotionally attached to your products and services. And over time, if you haven't increased your pricing for these products and services, um, your margins can be diminishing. So what we want to do is do a deep dive into that uh, exercise of taking a look at our margins and concentrate on those ones that are higher margins right now. And if we do have uh, things that we can cut when we took a look at, uh, at cash outflows, and if we can pass on those savings to our clients, uh, what I've been encouraging as well is if you're going to be offering gift cards at this time, or maybe you are a dentist and you're packaging up cleanings, something, something again to stimulate business and cash into your um, cash into your plan and into your the oxygen into your business. One of the things I encourage you is to think about your wording of that. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people say, um, "Please buy gift cards for our business at this time to to keep us going." That doesn't instill confidence. Um, saying something like, hey, come in, uh, here's for a coffee card, 10 coffees for the price of eight. Uh, due to these times, we want to pass on some of these savings that we are seeing onto you as a value, loyal customer. Just thinking about your communication plan and what, the con what you're instilling in confidence in regards to the messaging that you're giving your clientele. Also, again, taking a look at your client mix and historically, historic historically, woof, looking at those clients that have been well-paying, well loyal clients in the past, they need you right now. Now is not the time to go radio silent. Um, what I have been hearing a lot from, I actually was just before this um, call, had another call with a client who felt she didn't want me bombarding people with information at this time. And I truly feel this is not the time to become silent. It's the time to be bold. But inundating people with three page newsletters, maybe not. So what the practice that I have switched to in my business, um, I have a couple of community Facebook groups. Please uh, check them out. Check out my uh, business page where I'm constantly getting in and giving hacks and information, but I'm doing it on a more frequent basis and in a, in a rhythm. I always post at the same time. I have office hours at the same time. I give a debrief on Thursdays at 4.30 on Facebook Live. I'm doing it more frequently in rhythm, but shorter communications, getting in and saying, hey, have you thought about reissuing your cards to stop all of those outflows from happening? Have you thought about setting up a COVID GL in your business? So these are things that people can digest and they can use in their personal life or their businesses right away will be super helpful for them. Getting innovative, oh my gosh, I am seeing this all over the place and I love it. Um, taking Kayla and the Chamber of Commerce, for example, 105 events, they really need to get innovative and look what they've done in a matter of just days. They have came up with this navigating um, the, this COVID crisis. It's awesome. When we were before this, what I like to say in my business, as well as with the businesses that I work with, we were playing a game of chess. It was very strategic, really slow. Um, and now we're playing tennis. And Serena Williams, well, she's just served you a wicked uh, law ball, and it's coming right at you. So the rules of the games uh, before March 15th are different than they are today. And getting innovative and realize that you're playing a different game right now is so important. It goes back to my point number one of mindset and taking pause. So looking for opportunities for you to focus on uh, right now with your clients, again, with those client mix and what have you, and asking yourself, what is the next thing that I can do to pump oxygen into my business? What's the next thing that I can do to make money? And being a leader in your community, your community, of your clients, your community, of 
your employees and your team and the community in general is looking for leaders who are leading from a place of positivity and solution based so i'm saying be bold think of bold moves um one of the things that i was talking with kayla about just before we came on people are really forgiving right now so if you're switching to an online platform and you don't have it figured out this is a great time to test it out because people are being very patient and forgiving and understanding the need to pivot. So I'm suggesting going out and being bold and taking a look at what you can do to keep that oxygen pumping in your business. So on that note, I just wanna end uh, the presentation before I stop uh, sharing my screen and take some questions, but please stand up, step forward, and keep that oxygen pumping. Thank you, April. That was so good. I like what you said there about how um, you kind of just have to get bold. And that's kind of what we've done at the chamber. Like we kind of over the last last week, we were just kind of coming up with a plan and trying to figure out the plan and then trying to make something so perfect before we launched it. And then we were just like, you know what, we just have to jump in and start sending out these asks and just start doing it. We're going to learn by doing. Um, so, yeah, and your community yeah. has responded. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that there's one question there Lorna put in um, about, should that be credit cards too? So I think that was on your first slide when you were talking about cutting costs. Yes, do not cancel. You do not want to cancel. I want to repeat that that is not the word. <laughs> but reissue, and yes, I would say that as well, Lorna, nice to see you, by the way, is that taking a look at, just sometimes things are so difficult to unsubscribe to, and right now you need to get the cash and the oxygen pumping in your business, so you can't be spending time on trying to figure out how to cancel iTunes Guitar Tuner, right? So reissuing those cards stops it right away, frees up that time, um, get that card to, Get that card sent, a new card sent to you in the mail, and then you start to realize, okay, in my personal life, do I really need Crave TV, Netflix, Audible, and um, what else, uh, you know, at this time? My husband would say yes, but no, like, we don't need that right, in that, right, right now. Um, so it's a great way to really, when you're taking a look at that expense audit, to stop it, and then as you see that you need those things, if you do really need them, add them back on. And it's really interesting too, when I talk about the profit or the money um, generating expenses, you know, until this point, I was getting by on the free version of Zoom because I would have one person on at a time. But now I've had to pivot to having 20, 30 people on a call right away. That, that was a no brainer to upgrade to Zoom Pro, right? So those are the things that I don't want you to take time of, especially squeezing the oxygen of those expenses that build money and bring uh business in but just take a really just take a look when you're doing that expense audit can i just guess i didn't i came in late so i don't know if it's okay if i ask a question of course okay um i'm just wondering so if we if we reissue a credit card or debit card then there's things that we do need to kind of that'll take time won't it to kind of reconnect with things that we do have to use. Again, that's why you want to take a look at it first and just go, okay, what is the time benefit of this as well? And if there are things on it that you're just like, you take a look at them, you're like, oh, those are all things that I need. This is not worth it. Right. I've just been working with clients that they've, they've been overwhelmed by, oh my gosh, I can't believe I subscribe to all of those things. Okay. How do I cancel those in an efficient manner? Right, okay, I like that idea. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, another thing that I really like you said too about under your uh, get proactive slide is just even getting started on a financial plan. I'm sure um, you're with a lot of your clients right now, like I'm sure a lot of them have not had a plan for crisis um, situations like this. So I'm sure you're kind of experiencing a lot of people reaching out to you and saying, I had no, I, I didn't even know where to start or I don't have anything. So like, where should I, where should I start if I don't have something in place already? Well, 
interestingly enough, clients that have been working with me before this, that is not the message that I'm getting from them. I actually just, am, I just wanted to read this to you that this, I got this from a business owner that I work with that said, we're so glad that we did the work with you when we did. Because of it, we have less stress and more presence in our daily lives, despite of all this happening. Thank you again. So those are the messages that I've been getting with my clients that have, that we've been preparing for this. But what I want to say is that I've been working with clients that, that this crisis came on really hard with a lot of people and it is not too late. And that's the messaging that I want to get out to everybody that's on the call. And I've been, ta I've talked to 76 business owners in 48 hours is that it's not too late to get a plan together. And that's where I came up with a step, 10 step plan that I will share with you, Kayla. I don't know if you want me to send it out to everybody or if you're going to send it out, but I'll make that available to everybody on the call. If you want the plan and you want all the resources that I reference to, I have that whole package ready to go that I am certainly happy to share. But it's my whole messaging is, is it's not too late. That's amazing. Yeah, I can definitely, um, if you want to share that stuff with me, I can kind of send everybody who's on the call who participated um, that those resources and that information. Um, I just have a quick question for you if there's no other questions in the chat as of yet. Um, are there any benefits for not-for-profits in, in need um, with like loans or access to credit right now, like specifically for not-for-profits that you know of? Most of the benefits that have come down, not-for-profits have been included as qualified. Um, and so that's in regards to the B cap. So are you aware of the B cap? So that's the programs that are being administered through EDC and BDC in particular. So those are qualified um, businesses. We're taking a look at, at non-registered, taking a look at non-registered too. And interestingly enough, um, I'm, I'm working with more and more not-for-profit businesses, thanks to the chamber. And um, what we're finding is that their funding is actually coming through quicker um than than before which is really interesting because the government is looking to support uh programs and not for profit and as we've seen i keep saying that uh my time in politics with my husband has really prepared me for this this time and uh what we're seeing is unprecedented that 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 our government is making these decisions like i said hourly as well so uh in that resource package that i've put together that i'm going to share with you kayla has all of the links to for not-for-profit and for-profit on how to understand the benefits and how they relate to your organization. I cherry-picked the ones that I thought your audience could most benefit from today, and those are the ones that I included in the program for you. But I do have another workshop where I go step-by-step -step through understanding the benefits in layman's terms, and that's being offered through NSBI. So if you go to their website under events, we are offering another one next week. They've, they've been sold out, so I encourage you to go and apply for those, uh, not apply, but register for those. And I go step by step through all of the benefits and who, who it's applicable for and who would most benefit from that. So if that's helpful for, to the group, um, that's, that is available. Um, I see that there is a question here in the chat. Um, do you have any recommendations to have vendors forgive interest? Yes. So uh, I used to do this in times of business as usual um, as well, is that saying, okay, again, people want to, your vendors want to hear from you. And picking up the phone and having a conversation with them is going to take you so much further than ignoring their calls because the majority of people right now are ignoring vendor calls. And going to them with a plan. I cannot stress enough that if you go to somebody with a plan and say, how, how about this? Because again, I wasn't able to show you this, and this is a very crude drawing, but this is what I was talking about of the vendor borrower vendor matrix so that over time, um, the desire of the borrower decreases and the desire of the lender increases. So understanding that whole mentality is so important because you want to keep yourself that the lender knows that you are there and you're going to work with them for a plan. So I would go 
for a plan to say, hey, look, I can afford $200 a week if you waive the interest. Are you willing to work with me on this? And I am telling you, having done this for 13 years, you will have eight, nine times out of 10, they'll just be so thankful that you A, picked up the phone to talk to them, and B, that you have a plan, and C, that you're putting yourself on that, vent, on that uh, lender borrower matrix, that they will be willing to work with you. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, you made a good point too on your tax planning slide as well to, you know, like to treat it as if you were still going to file your taxes on April 30th. Um, so I think it's like that, that's a big important thing is just kind of communicating um, with your vendors and, and showing that you're willing to at least try to like pay what you can. Um, I did see something on Facebook where, you know, it was like with your water bill, with your NS power bill, like basically just communicate them with them as much as you possibly can and just say, you know, like I'm willing I'm, I'm willing to make somewhat of a payment, right? And, and showing that communication and that effort there. Um, as well, much as honestly, Kayla, like I take solace in the fact that we're all in this together and, and, and everybody understands that. So again, in the NSBI program, I go through what, what's the communication from Nova Scotia Power and how do you communicate with them? What is the communication with Halifax Water? What about the municipality? Also on the municipality's website as well, um, April 30th is like a really poopy day because your, your taxes are due, your HST is due, and your property tax is due, right? Mm -hmm. So they're looking as well that if you need a payment plan for your uh, property taxes, they've set up a email, and I'll include that, that's included in the package, um, both commercially and residentially, that you can call them and make payment plans with them. Again, everybody's willing to work in Nova Scotia Power. I mean, they've donated $500,000 to the United Way. They've also uh, increased their, their heat uh, program. So we're all in this together and we all need to help one another to move forward. Absolutely. Um, I see there is another question here. Um, should we connect with our office leasing agent regarding rent, rent subsidies or deferrals? So the rent, uh, the Nova Scotia rent deferral program, to be eligible for that program, you do have to meet a number of criteria. And one of the criteria is due to the Health Protection Act and the emergency uh, that we declared a state of emergency in the province of Nova Scotia. Because of that, if your business was shut down um, and forced to shut down, that's one of the qualifications. So, for example, gyms, uh, spas, salons, restaurants have been restricted about what they can do. Um, those are the businesses that, that qualify for that, but having, and there's other qualifications too, which I've included in the package. Uh, but having said that, Working with your landlord is so important at this time. You have to remember that the landlord also has obligations to the bank. And what the banks have come and said is that in some cases, they'll defer the mortgage. In some cases, the commercial bankers have said, we will only offer you uh, principal relief. Um, so they have to pay the interest. But at the end of that deferral per period, they need to owe that, they have to pay that to uh, the bank. It's not mortgage forgiveness, it's mortgage deferral. So what this program that the Nova Scotia government's come up with, because they released that uh, at this time landlords can't lock tenants out of their building, they also can't uh, kick them out of their building. There's, this is a backstop to help the tenant because it's a backstop to help the landlord know that if something should happen to that business, they, because they've passed that along to their tenant to say, okay, we're giving you a deferral, that there's something there that's a guarantee for them if that business should, should survive. However, having survived the crisis in 2008, there may be a lot of inventory out there for commercial space. Your landlord, just like your vendors, want to see that you're coming with a plan to pay. So like I said before, I worked with another business owner that we drafted a plan that she had a $10,000 uh, damage deposit. And we went and said, hey, could we just draw from that damage deposit during this time? And they were like amazing, out of the box thinking. They were really um, happy to do that for her. And they're just gonna keep checking in and having a plan. The other thing is that she's a very astute, very smart business owner. And she went to them with this plan literally on March 16th. Um, so she was the first one in and had a plan. 
Now, there's five other tenants in that building. I'm not sure if those other five other, other if how how much by the fifth time that somebody asked how uh, willing that landlord would be. So I just again suggest be the first to the gate, have a solid plan, come with a solution, and um, I, I would just really think that they would want to work with you. Absolutely. Um, one other question that I have as well too, I know a lot of people are probably kind of worried about looking at their investment portfolios right now. Um, what kind of advice do you have for everyone who's kind of worried about the market? <laughs> yeah, okay, we're all, we're all worried about the market. Um, we, again, as I said, I began my career in 1999 at a, at, a, at a burst and came back again from a lovely mat leave at a burst as well. And what I know to be true is that markets rebound. And if you are in, if, if you decide to pull out of your investments now, that's that you've just solidified the loss. Right now it is a paper loss. And uh, we just need to see, again, uh, these, this is, these are unprecedented times, but if, I, I think this is a good time for you to really test what your toler risk tolerance is to investing. Um, so it may be a good time to look at rebalancing a portfolio, but pulling out right now, you're solidifying those losses. One of the backstops that the government has done, especially for, um, people who are drawing from a RIF right now, so they've changed their retirement savings into a retirement income fund, is that they're, they've uh, reduced the minimum amount that you have to take out by 25% to try and help our retirees who are already in a place where they're drawing from their investments. So again, contacting your financial advisor and really working with them on a solid plan. Again, we don't wanna be making these decisions from a place of fear. Uh, we want to be making these decisions from a place of fact. So again, your financial advisor would be the best place to, to start having that conversation. And I see um, Megan's uh, comment here. Did, did you want to just read that, Kayla? Yeah, I'll read that for sure. If you're not a qualifying business, uh, is, it, is it still maybe worth, reach, worth it to reach out to your landlord leasing agent? Our tenants are not qualifying businesses, but we are still giving them the option for rent deferrals if they need it, or if it helps them secure their cash flow at the moment, because we also have the option to defer the mortgage. This, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about, talking about, and awesome to you, Megan. Landlords are, again, they would lose too. So they are willing to work with you if you're coming with a solid plan. And I love, um, Megan, that you are, are offering this option when it's not been deemed like that you, or suggested or deemed that you have to with the province. This is the thing, like we are all in this together. This is affecting everybody. My daughter showed me a video of Dubai and it's like, it's, it's like a ghost town where usually it's, like the whole planet, we're all in this together. And the only way we're going to come out on this the other side is if we keep that stand up, get good walking forward and keep, keep on keeping on, like helping each other. So Megan, thank you to that. I really love that. Uh, Lorna has another question here as well, too. Can, can you comment on acquisition of business at this time? Oh, very interesting question. Um, so again, I would ask you, would you be thinking of acquisition right now if we weren't in this crisis? And the reason why I ask you that is because cash flow is the oxygen of your business. If you have extra cash flow in your business that you were thinking of doing an acquisition before and now something is on sale, perhaps. But if you, if you calculated your cash flow runway and, and the runway is has a definitive period of time before that plane runs off the runway? Perhaps not, because again, you really want to be looking at uh, keeping cash in your business and in your personal life as much as possible. You're welcome. Um, I don't think there's any more questions in the chat there. Um, and I don't have any other questions for you, April, um, but thank you so, so much. Um, for spending the, the, the noon hour with us. Um, <laughs> and 
giving us um, a little bit of insight on how to mitigate the financial risk. And like you say, I know it's, uh, you know, everybody's kind of saying it, we're, we're all in this together and we'll get through this together and hopefully we'll all come out on the other side. And um, yeah. Well, thank you again to the Chamber of Commerce. One thing that I just want to say to, to everybody that's on the call is the Chamber has been, uh, the Nova Scotia government has tasked the Chamber with working with all of the other organizations that help small to medium businesses. So they're working with CFIB, they're working with uh, the Center for Women in Business, they're working with NSBI, and they have a direct line up to Minister Jeff McClellan. So if you do have concerns, please reach out to the Chamber. On their homepage, in the right-hand bottom button, is a survey for small business owners. Make your concerns known there. I love that all of these groups are happening on Facebook and all these places. I think it's wonderful that the community is coming together. But there's this one central place that the Chamber is leading the charge on. And again, it gets directly to the people, like the Minister of Small Business, we saw this happen yesterday with the rent deferral program that the chamber and its partners were able to take out the uh, five employee uh, caveat that was there, which, which is awesome because the government is listening to this to the, this voice. You see with CFIB what they were able to do to get that wage subsidy from 10% up to 75%. So please reach out to the chamber. Let your concerns be known use that little button on the right bottom corner, right? It's on the right bottom corner. Use that survey button and help uh, help the chamber help you. Yeah, just to echo those comments, our, our president and CEO, Patrick Sullivan, has done an excellent job kind of bringing all of these associations together. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of recently coined this, we're calling it like a task force, but it's the Nova Scotia Business Labor Economic Council. Um, so they're meeting three times a week, um, like you say, with like the direct kind of chain to, to government there, um, just basically sharing information and sharing those concerns. So uh, Patrick's worked so hard um, putting this, these, this task force together. Um, and I think on Monday, he had over 100 people on the call. So it's, it's amazing to see how kind of everybody's coming together um, to, to get through this time and to basically voice the concerns for our small businesses. So um, please make sure that you sign up for our newsletter as well too. We're giving a lot of our, a lot of these updates within our newsletter. So you can go to our website um, and scroll to the bottom and um, sign up for our newsletter there. Um, so yeah, thank you again, April, and uh, thank you for everyone who have participated today. We really appreciate it. And if there's any, uh, if there's any topics as well too that you'd like to see on these webinars, definitely reach out to me and let me know. Um, we're kind of in the process of scheduling for the next couple of weeks. Um, so you can find my contact contact information on the website. Um, my email is Kayla, K-A-Y-L-A, at HalifaxChamber.com. Um, so I'm happy to take any requests um, for information that you're looking for, um, but we are kind of just sharing as much information as we can um, to our businesses at this time. So thank you again, April, for, for your time today, and thank you for everybody for, uh, for attending. Thank you, and if there's any way that I can be a service to anybody that's on the call, uh, please, please reach out. Thanks, Kayla. Have a good day. Thank you, April. Thanks, everyone.